Chris, reflections on last night, the morning after. How does that feel? <laughs> it's uh, it's still sinking in, still sinking in. Um, just the the magnitude of what we've achieved. It, it just feels strange that we've been every morning for the for the last three weeks, been waking up, uh, preparing ourselves for what lies ahead that day, what mountains we've got to ride up, and uh, for the first time today, just being able to lie back again and, and switch off and think, you know what, we've, we've done it now, we, we can relax. How much satisfaction do you take from that, achieving the job and achieving it in such, in such a grand manner? You won by a long way. <sighs> yeah, um, it can take a lot of satisfaction from it. I mean, it, it really has been months and months of preparation to get ready for, for an event like the Tour de France. So, um, to come away um, having, having won it the way we did um, really is a, a fantastic feeling. Your road to Paris started a long way away from the heart of cycling's homeland in Europe, in Kenya. When, when did the, sort of the spark first get lit for you? Um, as, a, as a kid I was always on my bike um, never, never really in terms of competition or, or anything like that, but I, was, I always just loved riding my bike um, and I think that's, that's inevitably where, where this spark started, um, the, the love for the sport and um, I can tell you that I wouldn't be here today if uh, I wouldn't be able to get on my bike and train five, six hours a day if, uh, if I didn't love it. You never felt that being that mountain biking in near Nairobi was any barrier to one day getting here? <laughs> well, back, back then it, it, I, I didn't think it would be possible, but um, I think it just goes to show that if, if you really want something badly enough, you're going to find a way to make it happen. You mentioned your mother in your speech on the podium last night. Um, yeah. You mentioned the inspiration. How much did you call on that during the race itself? Um, uh, there were there were moments when I thought that's one of the reasons why why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why um, I'm going through this. Uh, when when the legs are screaming at you to slow down and stop, and um, I could reflect and think, well, actually, um, I'm doing this for a bigger reason. I'm doing it for for more people than than just for, for myself personally. And uh, it's uh, definitely helped keep the motivation up. Your, this is the first tour win. Dave Brailsford already says he thinks you can win more. Do you feel like you can do this again? You can win this race again? <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be back. I'd love to be back and to, um, to make this something that I target um, for as, as long as I can during my career. Um, I mean, I, 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 I feel extremely privileged to, to have been given the opportunity once to, to come here and, and, and to try and win it and um, yeah if, if I can have this opportunity again in the future I'd, I'd definitely go for it. You've got the yellow jersey there you said last night on the podium that it would stand the test of time what did you mean? Um, if you look at the, the history that uh, history of our sport and especially the, the revelations from from last year um, from um, from a decade ago now, um, I think it's it's only fitting to to let people know that the sport has changed, that um, it's no longer a, a sport where people are, are, are cheating to to get ahead, and um, this is one one yellow jersey that that will stand the test of time. It's not going to get stripped, and. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've come under a lot of scrutiny during the race, and I, I, I completely accept that. People have been let down in the past. Uh, personally, I've, I've been let down. I, I've, I was a big, big fan of, uh, of those races back then, and um, it, it really does make a mockery of, of things when, uh, when, when titles get stripped. So I just wanted to put it out there, let people know that this is one yellow jersey that, that is not going to get stripped. You you faced those questions, you mentioned them, there were, did you feel them, an extra burden as well as everything else you had to contend with this race? You're carrying, the, the, the faster you go, the louder the questions get. It, it definitely added a, another, another aspect to our race, um, something that maybe we hadn't anticipated quite, quite as much as uh, the impact it had on us. 
um, it, it, it was it was quite hard to deal with. I mean, people basically saying that, um, asking questions about if if we're complete frauds in, in what we're doing, and uh, that that makes it pretty hard when when you know you've you've spent months and months and months uh, training and, and really really working hard to get here. By virtue of what you've achieved, you're effectively the, the leader of that peloton now. Do you sense that the riders in that peloton have changed and that cycling has mm -hmm. moved on? It's not just about yeah. what you and Team Sky have done. Definitely, definitely. There's definitely a mood in the peloton that it, it just, it's not going to be accepted now. And you can even see guys from the past who have served um, suspensions and, and, and bans, they're they're definitely not popular at the moment, and uh, I, ca I can only see the sport carrying on in this manner and going going forward in that regard. And tell me, how does uh, after over 2,000 miles and three weeks in the saddle, how do you relax? Do you have a rest, or are you probably maybe racing? <laughs> Good question. No, I, I will relax, but um, I'm going to carry on uh, in Belgium and Holland and, and do a few smaller, lower key uh, circuit races, uh, criteriums for the next 10 days or so. So um, not quite the the relax uh, the relaxing that most people would have in mind, but um, still a bit of fun. And you'll start that when? Uh, this evening. This evening.